I suggest that this is what you really don't know behind the scenes of the tragic early demise of the pop band sensation of One Direction, Liam Payne. And as ever, I wanted to share the inside track on this because a lot of people suddenly jump on and say, oh, it's terrible, it's a tragedy, all of that sort of stuff. But there is always a bigger picture behind the scenes. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good to see you. Thank you so much as ever for your time today. And you know, we talk about pop sensations, don't we? And people say, oh, you know, uh, it's terribly tragic. But when you look at it, there can be some good sides to it as well. I mean, when you think about Helen Shapiro, a lady that I was lucky enough to meet, she became an international star, all thanks to walking back to happiness at the very early age of around about 14, 15. Suddenly she's starring at Sunday night at the London Palladium. And as she told me, she couldn't quite believe it, but she was too young to actually understand the value, the equation of exactly how fast and how quickly she'd become because it was a show that she sat and watched on a Sunday night alongside her father. Now when you look at Liam Payne it's a totally different story because literally when somebody becomes famous in your family you become an industry for that particular individual. And let me explain the reasoning behind that because a lot of people are now attacking universal music and saying oh you know they were going to drop Liam and they dropped him and he was very upset by this. It's a business and basically Liam wanted to make totally different music to that of what the record label wanted to hopefully sell commercialability, you know, commercialization, whatever you want to call it. His fans really want upbeat poppy tunes. He, at the age of 31, wanted to change direction, excuse the pun. And so it didn't necessarily meet, hence the reason they decided to move away from that. Back to the people around him. What's fascinating here, you see, is even way back in the halcyon days of Hollywood, the golden age of Hollywood, Joan Crawford had to employ, not employ, but the studio had to employ her own brother, just to keep him from spilling secrets to the media. They figured if they gave him a job and, you know, maybe the lure of a chance of becoming a screen icon himself, he may shut up. This is part of the problem. And I'm not suggesting this was the case with Liam's family, but when you are able to buy the whole people around you, houses, cars, set them up for life, suddenly the commodity becomes very, very viable. So behind the scenes, you know, the bigger issue, and this is why a lot of people have been getting in touch saying, well, we know you worked in the industry. What was it really like? You become a commodity for those people. You have to keep working and you have to keep providing. It's terribly sad what happened to Liam, as I said previously, but truly the responsibilities are down to him. He was a 31 year old man, suddenly in another country, seemingly with nobody close around him. And those people must have known that, you know, the difficulties looming with the record label, with the publicist, with the management, he was changing direction. Why was nobody there truly to support him? Seemingly because he was putting on a public front. The pop songwriter Guy Chambers, famous of course for Penny Many Hits, for another boy band member, Take That Star Robbie Williams, said that there should be a ban on people entering talent shows when they're very young, particularly under the age of, say, 16. That's ridiculous, you know. Uh, sort of young talent has been nurtured to greater plum. You could say that Mickey Rooney, who also started out as a child star, well, he could have easily succumbed to that problem. He came to the problem of marrying eight times and literally becoming a gambling addict. I knew him well, but you couldn't blame the industry for that. They just gave him access to the money, the power and the fame. If he hadn't have had that, he still could have maybe have married eight times. But Liam, you see, is a different story. He's a story of our times and social media want to paint everybody into the bad light, including his former mentor and of course, star maker Simon Cowell. They gave that person the opportunity to appear on screen. Manipulation happens all the time in talent shows. They decide whether you're going to win, lose or draw. They decided One Direction was going to be a big success. And why was it Liam that seemingly couldn't cope with the fame and not the rest of the band? If they're all so close and so friendly and caring for each other, why were they not with him more constantly? You understand how this works. People make choices. It's not necessarily the business. It's the business of you and how you deliver and more importantly, practice your own life. As I said before, it's terribly tragic for Liam Payne, but all of these people trying to blame the industry and the people around the industry, it's a little unfair. At what point, at what age do you actually take responsibility for you? Neil Sean in the very heart of Kensington.